I'm sorry. I'm just really excited, and I have so much that is bubbling up inside me, you know. Before Potters and LCI, I was uh, struggling a lot, you know, with um, being bound and just caught up in a lot, you know, in the world. And now, today, I can finally say that I'm an overcomer, you know, and it's, it's just a good feeling. I'm so, so, so happy. I'm so excited for the things that I know that he has in store for me, you know. <sighs> yes, it's, it's no longer, you know, a head thing for me. It's, it's revelation. It's, it's more like a feeling, you know. It's, it's, it's so hard to explain, you know. God is just so good and I'm just grateful for being an overcomer. I don't have that weight on me anymore. You know, it's, I'm finally free. I'm finally living in his freedom. You know, God has just blessed me tremendously, you know, this opportunity. I'm just so excited, you know, overcoming all the obstacles, you know, everything that the world had or throw it at me, everything that was holding me down. God is just so amazing. And LCI has helped me fed me, you know, spiritually in ways that I know that when I get out there in the real world, uh, it's not going to be hard giving in to the things of the world. You know, God is good, and I'm ready for whatever the devil has for me because I know that I'm going to be whipping him right, left, center. You know, it's, it's just an excitement, you know. I can't wait to get back with the youths, you know, being an example to them because they're very precious to me, you know being a light to my family, to my church member, and everybody else out there. You know, who is going to be seeing me, you know, because that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be shining a light for everyone to see in his name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Misty. Now the next young man that I want to ask to come up, uh, quite an extraordinary young man. Was always there early in the morning helping to cook with breakfast. And we were up at Mountain Pine Ridge, and I caught him ironing his shirts up at Mountain Pine Ridge. Not many men I know that do that. Come on up, Leroy. Leroy, you are truly a blessing to have, have with us. Good night, everybody. I have to say it's a blessing to be here tonight. You know, uh, I just want to say thanks for coming out. Uh, I just want to be a little bit transparent with you guys uh, so you can know a little bit where I came from. You know, so I might tell you a little bit about my testimony. You know, I, uh, I grew up in a beautiful family at night. I had my mom and dad. You know, I was the second to last child born, you know, and... Um, it was pretty good, you know, we, we, uh, uh, it wasn't a Christian environment, my mom was a Christian, at least for, you know, we go to church, and I remember, um, my mom would take my little brother and I to church, hands in hands, you know, he'd take us to church, and, um, at, when, I, when I was at age seven, my mom passed away, you know, and I, I'd always remember my mom being the passion of the house, you know, she was so passionate about God, you know, and I kind of gained that passion from her, you know, and uh, she was always a backbone of our family also, you know, so I kind of gained that from her, you know, and ever since my mom passed away, you know, everything just kind of hit the ground, you know, it went really hard for us, and we got separated, you know, and my little brother and I, uh, we, we were the only one who were close together, so we, we created a really strong relationship there, you know, uh, so we got pretty hard, you know, we stayed with our, with our older sister, but it wasn't as, you know, we didn't get that motherly love you know, for, for my sister. So, um, you know, I, I started working at a very uh, young age, and even though I had lost my mom, I, had, I still had that passion for God, and I still had that passion to keep my family together. You know, so I started looking out for my little brother, you know, and, and, and that passion inside me for God just started growing, you know, and, and the more it grew inside of me, you know, I just, I just felt drawn to God. So I, start, I developed a relationship with God, and when I did that, you know, I, I recognized how awesome that was. You know, and um, that's just kind of how I grew up. You know, ever since then, I've been walking with God, you know, and 
and been encountering wonderful times with them, you know, but then again, you know, when it gets really good with God, you know, the enemy don't like that, so he throws stuff in your way, you know, uh, one of the reasons why I came to, one of the reasons why I came to LCI and I encountered potters, you know, was because I was, I was, I was going through depression, you know, I, I'm going to be really transparent with you guys, you know, and uh, I, I, I had so much love inside of me, you know, I'd always pray for a girlfriend, you know, uh, God gave me a girlfriend, you know, uh, and it didn't really work out, you know, she, she broke my heart, you know, it, it she uh, cheated on me, and, and, and that really tore me down, you know, because uh, most importantly, she cheated on me with my brother, you know, and, and, and that hit me, that was like a, a double killer right there, so, so that developed a lot of unforgiveness inside of me, you know, towards these people, you know, and, 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 and I have to say, coming to LCI was where I found out that I had a lot of roots in my heart that I had to get rid of, you know, being poured and being filled with truth every day, you know, it was, it was just, it was just mind-blowing, you know, I used to think that, man, you know, it was all good with me, you know, it was all good with God, you know, but God just showed me, you know, and I said, I said to myself, you know, I'm going to allow God to just have his way in me, you know, he's blessed me with beautiful people around me that showed me that, mother, that motherly love, you know, and that compassion that I was lacking, you know, and I came to LCI, and he surrounded me with like-minded people, you know, with people who, who, who actually shared the same, the same struggles that I shared, you know, and, and I have to say, you know, one of the best things that I've ever done in my life was allow that God that moment to, to work in my life through LCI, you know, God has showed me how much forgiveness is really important, you know, and how much that father embrace is, is, is very important in my life because uh, my dad wasn't always there for us. So I, had a, I had a distorted vision towards God, you know, and, and, and just going through that father's embrace really kind of cleared my mind up and showed me, you know, that God's not like that. You know, so uh, I, I was just blessed to be a part of LCI. And if there's any, any of you out there that, that experiences these struggles in your life, you know, and, and you really want to change in your life, LCI is the place you might want to, uh, hang out and, you know, have God work in your life because I have to say it was one of the best choices I've ever made, you know, and, and I'm just, I'm just happy to be here, you know, I'd never, I'd never thought that, you know, I would be able to share my experience with, with you guys, but this happened because God wanted it to happen, you know, and I'm just overwhelmed by all of this. Hope you guys have a very good rest of the night. Thank you. Now, there was, a, there was another young lady that requested to be third. I'm not sure why third, but Bernadine, come on up. She's, uh, she's here with her sister in the class together, and later her sister will be up here. So it was so nice to have sisters here, share a lot of the same things, and very good. Good night. Um, uh, my name is Bernadine, and I am from Placentia. Um, let's see. Before Elsa and Potters, I was a very angry person. I was really shy. Um, I never really liked to be with a lot of people because I was shy. And hmm, let's see. When I came. When I, when I went to Potter's, it was just amazing how much I got out of me and how much lighter I felt. And when Miss Sarah and Mr. Menelo, and they're not here, um, when they talked to me about LCI, I was like, as they said it, I was so happy. I was like, yes, this is what I needed. And so I talked to my sister and my two co my cousins and my aunt, and we decided to come. And it, the first day, it was just... I was just, it was just so amazing and happy. And for me, LCI is actually a life-changing institute because I got so much out of it and I got out of my shell and I'm very happier now and I can speak out more. And uh, let's see, like, I just want to thank everyone for coming. 
Um, my mom, Miss Anita, my aunt, Thelma. Thank Mr. Rich, Mr. David, um, Miss Dupem, and Miss Rachel for being so patient with us and being there with us every day and praying for us and helping us get through every single day. And it was just a blessing, and I'm just so happy, and I just can't wait to see what else um, God has to give to me. And I'm just, I can't wait for tomorrow and the day after. And I just want to thank God um, for having me here today. That's it. <laughs> now, I always admire those that have very busy lives and yet set everything aside when they have a business to run and all these things, and yet they set it all aside because they want to spend three weeks with God. And so the next couple I'd like to ask to come up is Susie and Lawrence Stewart. Well, good evening, everybody. Happy to see you all here. My name is Susie. I'm born, got educated, accepted Jesus at age 16, always went to church, got married almost for 30 years now. This all happened in Spanish Lookout. I'm a woman of one man, and we have five children, ages, five, tw ages 12 to 27. I grew up in a godly home with eight brothers and two sisters and my parents who are still alive today. We were married for five and a half weeks, when my husband had a big motorcycle accident, and for the next six months we spent time together and we didn't say anything new to each other because we heard it together. <clears throat> my purpose to go to LCI was to find Susie. Susie was scattered all over the place and needs to find herself and let God put her together again. Through different Bible verses, I found in the Word of God that helped me to find myself. Potters, three weeks ago, took me to some past experiences, and the Lord showed me the story in John 5, laying sick at the pool of Bethesda. And these lay a multitude of hurt feelings. I was judged, criticized, unloved, abandoned, physical, verbally, sexually abused, left at and belittled, and she was waiting for the moving of the water. An angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then some hurts were made well, now a certain sin that had been there in her heart was sick for 38 years with pride. When Jesus saw her lying there and knew that she already had been in that condition a long time, he said to her, do you want to be made well? Isaiah, Isaiah 53 verse 5. But he was pierced for Susie's transgressions. He was crushed for her iniquities. The punishment that brought her peace was on him and by his wounds she is healed. Mark 16, verse 7, but go tell Susie that Jesus goes before her. John 21, verse 15, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Susie, do you love me more than others? It's a hard question. LTI, LTI is a great experience. They allow us to sit together with, they al allow you to sit with your husband side by side for eight plus hours every day for three weeks. We didn't even have a time to start an argument because we would never have settled it. There was no time. <laughs> it gave me a break from home responsibilities. No cooking, no baking, no laundry. A break from family and friends. They cooked delicious meals there. We went on outings, swimming, did games, made new friends. I actually enjoyed the movie nights. We had birthday parties. Last night will be an unforgettable for the rest of my life. <laughs> Okay, is that enough? Is that all LTI? <laughs> LTI is one of my best decisions I ever made. With intense teachings, I learned a lot of truths. Out of 10 plus different speakers, Robert Morris and John Bevere impacted my life a lot. Robert Morris speaking on dreams and destiny, I realized that I was stuck in dream, not stepping into God's destiny. Speaker Dr. Graffalo A. Dollar, was an eye-opener for me, teaching on five hindrances to change. 
the hindrances that will not let us change is pride, fear, rebellion, laziness, ignorance. Joyce Meyer was my favorite. Walking in ob obedience gives authority. Since I grew up with abusive authority in home, school, churches, school boards, community leaders, I had a hard time to submit. Everybody laugh, okay? <laughs> As we did our tests each morning at LCI for the first days, I had a problem that my own son would score them. I was thinking payback time came. <laughs> he had authority. One morning I decided instead of writing my own name, Susie, I wrote mom to remind him I was still in authority. <laughs> a few days later, I realized that he gave grace on the first few tests already. God kept working on my heart until I was able to hear him. Again and again, he wanted me to look and hear from him. He showed me what a healthy authority would look like. I realized that giving grace plays a huge role in authority. Each time I started to look to people, he invited me to look at him, to look for authority. Colossians 3 verse 1. Since then, Susie has been raised with Christ, set her heart on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. John 15, verse 18. If the world hates Susie, keep in mind that it hated me first. If she belongs to the world, it would have her as its own. As it is, she does not belong to the world, but I have chosen her out of the world. That is why the world hates her. Not Christians. Christians don't hate me. The world does. I want to thank my husband for giving me this opportunity at LCI. Our children, Anita, who supported us with words of encouragement from, from, from all the way in Peru. Jeff for taking up responsibility at, at the business and taking care of your little sister. It meant the world to me. Randy for running the farm in your already busy schedule. Kendrick for scoring my tests, and it was an honor to spend time together all this, at the same place. Bathaya, for your unending joy and love and doing your best. I missed your hugs. Thanks to Rich and Rachel, David and Dupi, for your example. Merita for all the hard labor cooking meals for us. And the whole class for making this a reality. Thanks for those that prayed for us and visited us. Thank you. Oh, good evening, everybody. It's, it was a nice thing to be with, there with people, kind of all the same vision. We wanted to change. So in that part, we were all kind of in the same boat. We, so to hang out together with three weeks, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of nice. To, and, and I don't know if Rich mentioned it earlier, that we came to change our own lives. That's what I made sure. I will not be there to see if I could change my wife's life or anybody else because I wanted to change myself. <clears throat> so, but anyways, I am Lawrence Dweek. This is my wife, Susie. First of all, thank you for this great... First of all, thank God for his grace. I would like to thank Rich and Rachel for doing the LCI and for all the that are involved in this, whatever they do. <clears throat> I grew up in a Christian home. Wherever is somewhere in my mid-teen years, my dad <clears throat> made a change. He went to visit another church. He knew there was more to Christianity. When I was about 25, I got married and still didn't fix all my problems. Then we searched for more. We found uh, lots of answers, <clears throat> lots of answers. I knew there was more than that. I heard positive testimonies from LCI. I, <clears throat> I thought, let's try that. I need, I need to change the way I was thinking. There was too much negative thinking and struggled with condemnation. LCI has a lots of good and positive teaching. <clears throat> teaching. Jack Frost was one, he said, receive love and give it away. 
unconditional love is <clears throat> never based on the merit of the one receiving it, but on the merit of the one giving it. <clears throat> Jesus is a good example. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. So, that was that is one thing that was in my heart that I wouldn't I would not go and change my life because I want to change somebody else that was from my heart thank you It really was a joy to see Kendrick being the correct in their tests. <laughs> and, no, I, I, and, and Kendrick also taught them. I told, I, I, when they said they were coming, I said, oh, you're willing to be taught by your son, huh? I said, oh, yeah. No, they've never been more proud of you, Kendrick. I could see that. Well, the next young lady I'd, I'd like to have up here, um, uh, she's from a family who I've, I've had almost every class for a long time, I had one, one of her uh, siblings or somebody from that family. That's the Welk family. Come on up, Ann. It's been great to, to have you. She has a young boy that, that came and visit sometimes, and uh, it's good to see them together. Good night, everyone. Well, my name is Anne Flowers. Most of, or lots of you will know me as Anne Welk, or Anna Welk, because I grew up here. I was born and raised here. And um, I am really happy that I had the chance to go to LCI. It wasn't easy. We, had, we didn't have the money to provide, so I asked somebody if, some, if there would be somebody who could provide it. And sure enough, thank God, there's always a way when it comes, if you rely on God. I really, really, really needed it. I knew I wasn't, wasn't really there for my husband or my son anymore because um, I was so much in depression, and you know, depression is no fun. You, you don't enjoy, enjoy life in that state, and so I really wanted help. I didn't want to live like this, and so I found answers, and um, those answers are so simple. In God, you can you have to rely on God and, and and live with Him. I mean, you it has to be Him first, not yourself first or somebody else first. It has to be God first, and also those intimidations what they were talking about. So I had been in, been intimidated so many times in my life, and. I saw it and we dealt with it. I still will have to deal more when I go back because what I'm saying is I'm going back is I live in Borough Boom right now with my husband and son. They're sitting right over there, Stefan Flowers and Jared Flowers. Thank God he came. Yes, the Lord has blessed me so much and I want to go back and be a real witness because Pearl Boom is, to me, looks very black, very dark. They need salvation very much. So I want you to pray for me. And probably I'll ask you, some of you guys, to come in and teach. How would that be? 
Thank you very much for everything. Keep in mind that for many of these students, this is one of the biggest things they've ever done, to stand up in front of all these people and give a testimony. You know that the boldness comes from breaking that intimidation that, uh, that we learned in class, and, and they've had some practice, and that's, that's great. The next young lady I'd like to call up is one, I don't think I've ever seen somebody more determined to change than this, this young lady. And when I see that kind of determinedness, I know she's going to make it. Come on up, Elaine. everyone. My name is Elaine Elizabeth Herrera from Placencia Village. I'm a mother of four beautiful kids and I came to LCI mainly because I was searching for love and I went all into the world into everything you can think about just to feel some sort of love and I came to realize that nothing out there was for me. It just tore me up more, you know, and I grew up in church, you know, and I went to church and I would sit and listen to the pastor preach and really the words just came in and went out to the next years like I didn't hear anything. And when I went to Potter's, like I just let go of everything and the weight that was lifted off me, like, was so amazing. And that's when he came in and he said, you know, I'm going to love you. I'm going to take care of you. Why are you looking out there for what I'm here to give you? And, you know, I was like, man, really? And, you know, every day he showed me something new. And I learned so much from LCI and... My teacher, like I had two moms, two dad, and Mr. Rich, Miss Rachel, Mr. David, Miss Lupe. And you know, I met great friends, and their words were all about God loves you, you know. And because he gave me this feeling and this love, and I told him, you know, God does. Please just hold on to me. And he said, I got you. So I said, okay. And he told me all I want you to do is take those beautiful kids of yours and give them back to me. And I said, I sure will. You know, and so I'm reaching and learning so much and I'm ready to step out in this world and be a great mom, be a great person, love God with everything just because he loved me first. You know, and he loved me with all my mistakes, all my faults. You know, he had, he still has me. He's right here beside me, you know, and that's a love from God, you know. His love is amazing. You won't feel no other love like his love, you know. Thank you. The next young man I'd like to call up has been such a joy to, to be around. Always happy and uh, encouraging and ready to do whatever needed done all the time. Now I've had some of his siblings in the class too before, so come on up, Peter. Peter Friesen. Hendrick's going to help him out a little here. Hello, good evening, everyone. 
and I want to share my testimony. So I was born in Little Belize. I lived there for. Okay. Yeah, and then. They go up to Boston. How I grew up there. And me and other wouldn't be probably hunting what better to lead from me and Levi's teeth. I will hunt like the Jesus Lev. My parents wanted to teach me to be to walk with Jesus. Yeah, and and but uh, the the thank us the fiend will voice me will mean or by shouting. The devil wanted me to take uh, different ways. So and I that's why I got was. And that's how I grew up. And I know we got a double new. I will me. Yeah, and then so and then um, there was one guy from Spanish to God. His name is Franz Latimon. And there was a guy from Spanish to God named Frank Latimon. Yeah, and he he asked me to pray for me. So yeah, I said sure, and. When he does that, after that I feel uh, something touch my heart, so I need to go somewhere because there was so many religious people around me and do stuff that was wrong. And I want to go take a different way to live for Jesus. So. Then one day I find job in PG, uh, Frank Plot. So that's where I change uh, lots and come clo closer to Jesus. And and but I still have uh, problems there. And, but the uh, guys bothered me there too, too much. So and so they sent me to uh, Potter's. And that was very, very nice for me to, um, for my life, for change, for my heart. Uh, and I actually uh, feel that uh, helps me. And um, then I come to LCI and I feel. Uh, I feel different. Uh, I didn't really feel uh, so much different, and but I see, I feel uh, I have uh, that's uh, my heart is so uh, His heart was light, he said. Yes, and and now I feel uh, much better, and I really feel I gave my heart to Jesus. So, and I think that's it. Thank you. You can see the love of the Lord in his eyes when you look at him, so he definitely got a change. Now the next young lady I'd like to invite up is one that had to face some of her past tragedies and let the Lord put them all into order, and she did. She was struggled some, but she sure finished well. So come on up, Sabrina.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sabrina Plitt, and I'm 15 years old. I was struggling with many things in life, like unforgiveness, getting over loss of loved ones, feeling uncomfortable around others, and a lot more. I was hurt, and I would try to ignore everything by putting on my mask. Every time someone would ask me, hey, how are you? I would say, I'm great. I would put a, oh. I learned, no, I would, try, I would try to ignore everything. I learned you can't ignore it, your problems. They would just keep coming back. John Bevere spoke in The Bait of Satan about unforgiveness and the consequences. That really hit me. There were some people I had a hard time forgiving. In the last week of LCI, I was really uncomfortable. I had to tell someone, so I talked to Veronica and Kendrick. I asked them questions. Most answers shocked me. They asked me how my relationship with God was. To be honest, I didn't know how to answer that one. I realized, I thought about it and realized my relationship with God was not good at all. I was speechless and confused. I didn't know how to feel. Breaking Intimidation by John Brevere also helped that night. They told me I had to give God everything. And so I did and I prayed. Let me tell you, prayer is powerful. So I released to God my dad that died. I was mad at God for not giving me the better picture of the good that was yet to come. So now I gave God everything, and I will wait patiently for the better picture that God has in store for me, even if I have to wait 20 more years. That night, I also changed around my relationship with God. Now God is so close to me, I can feel him everywhere I walk. The song Awesome God came into my head, so I decided to listen to it. I started tearing because I couldn't believe I ever thought God wasn't real. God is real. I gave God, I gave, I gave God my heart that night. It felt like I could float. There was just so much joy inside of me. It was like a heavy weight lifted off my shoulder. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. LCI was the best thing I ever did. It was worth it. I got healed of a lot of wounds, wounds I didn't even know I had. Pastor Rich and Miss Rachel helped me take back my joy that was stolen from me by the devil. Pastor David and Miss Dupe helped me get rid of my addiction. I just wanted to say thank you to all my leaders and everyone else for helping me at LCI and letting me go to LCI. These past three weeks went by way too fast. Thank you to my parents for being so supportive. I love you guys so much. Thank you for coming, everyone, and may God bless each and every one of you. I can tell you after that experience, she did get the joy of the Lord. She was laughing for about an hour uncontrollably. <laughs> the next uh, couple I would like to ask to come up are our missionaries in Dangriga. And they're, uh, come on up Tim and Julie. Their parents have been through the class. Uh, three classes ago, if any of you were here, um, was uh, Galen and Phyllis Groff is Tim's parents. So, um, so they're now uh, at the same, uh, in the same area where, where Galen and Phyllis were, and they're, they've taken over that uh, mission field. So. Good evening, everyone. <coughs> I've learned so much here at LCI, but I'll share one of the victories that God gave me. As long as I can remember, I've felt a distance between myself and God. It made me feel like a fraud. How could I bring others to Jesus when I felt the distance between himself and him and myself? I finally realized why. I've been holding on to my sins and faults, and they've been like rocks in the soil of my heart. Satan would bring to my memory little mistakes that I'd made, and I would replay them over and over again in my mind and just groan, wishing I could go back and fix those mistakes. I knew God had forgiven me, but couldn't seem to truly let go of my faults. Isaiah 50, 
10 to 11 says, Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the word of his servant? Let him who walks in the dark, who has no light, trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. But now, all of you who light fires and provide yourself with flaming torches, go walk in the torches you have set ablaze. This is what you shall receive from my hand. You will lie down in torment. I have been living in torment, revisiting my own mistakes and my own light instead of truly opening myself to God's light and letting go of my faults. Jesus paid for my mistakes, but I wasn't letting, the really, wasn't letting him really take my faults away from me. But now, when Satan reminds me of one of my past mistakes, I say, that's not mine anymore. Jesus bought and paid for that. It belongs to him. God said in Ezekiel 36, 25 to 27, I'll pour pure water over you and scrub you clean. I'll remove, remove the stone heart from your body and replace, replace it with the heart that is God-willed, not self-willed. I'll put my spirit in you and make it possible for you to do what I tell you and live by my commands. You'll once again live in the land of your ancestors. You'll be my people and I will be your God. God is giving me a new heart, one without rocks in it. He's my redeemer and I'm his child. Good evening, guys. <clears throat> my name's Tim, and that's, of course, my beautiful wife, Julie. We had an awesome time. And, you know, it, it's not very often that a married couple in their 40s gets a chance to spend three whole weeks away from their kids just by themselves, just being together, like the Duick said, just sitting beside each other. And not arguing because you don't have time to, to fix anything about anything. Um, I had a very dramatic experience um, during, during the Potter's Weekend. Um, they walked us through a process of going to find some pain in your life. And then you ask what the pain is saying. Because that's a lie. And then after you discover that, then you go and you, and you walk through the process of, uh, of asking Jesus what the truth is about that lie. Um, so during one of those sessions, uh, they asked me to, well, first we had to take a mask off, and the mask that I took off was a control mask, because I like to kind of hold everything tight and, uh, and make sure everything's in control. Uh, so I took my control mask off, and after I had my control mask off, I went into a very painful memory that I had completely forgotten about. So I'm 42 years old, and I had this memory of being a six or seven year old in this very dark room where this very shameful thing was happening and there was a lie that was told to me during that time and I had I had I had lived with that lie and I had lived with that shame about myself all of my life and I had never remembered that memory before um, it was a very painful memory and it was very frightening to me so uh, so they would send us out uh, to do journaling and you had to sit there and journal all by yourself for like an hour and 15 minutes during the potters. So if you're not into that, be careful. But I recommend it. Um, so I remember one particular session where they had asked us to go out journaling. I just, I didn't even want to do it. I was afraid. My body was shaking. And uh, I just couldn't get over the fear of that pain and that shame that I'd been living with in that memory. It wasn't until... We finished the Potter's Weekend and we got into some of the classes at LCI that I felt brave enough to go back into that memory. In fact, it was at the very beginning of the spiritual warfare session that was being taught by Rachel, uh, Rachel Deeds. And uh, before she started the session on spiritual warfare, she started singing a song. And while she was singing that song, I felt brave enough to close my eyes and asked Jesus to take me back into that memory. And you know what I saw? I saw an angel. Instead of sitting there in the darkness as a six-year-old, all by myself, experiencing this shameful thing, 
I saw an angel standing over in the corner holding up a lantern that was so bright that I couldn't see anything else. And so now, when I go back into that memory, instead of having a shameful memory of something that I had to see and I would never forget and I would always be ashamed of it, now what do I see? An angel with light, and I can't see anything else. Amen? So my life has been changed. Amen? Now, the next person I'd like to call up is our youngest LCI student, and one that didn't know what LCI was about either till Potter's, and she came up and asked me, said, I'd really like to come to LCI. You think you could make it happen? And I said, sure. So, something like that. <laughs> come on up, Jocelyn. Hey everybody, um, my name is Jocelyn, by the way. Oh, good night everyone. Um, it's nice to have you all here tonight. And um, I just want to share my testimony with you guys and I just hope you guys get ins you guys change your life by it if you're not a Christian or whatever it may be. So, um, so many times in my life, I felt lonely, scared, rejected by the people whom I love the most. And <clears throat> for me personally, being at Potter's made me come to realize, even when I feel lonely, scared, rejected, empty, I know that God, <laughs> I know that I'm never alone because God's always by my side. And even when I feel scared, he's always there for me. Um, for me right now, I feel like there's no reason to be scared because God called us his sons and daughters and, yeah. So many times in my life, the devil, he tried to deceive me by twisted truths, which were lies from the enemy. At LTI, um, at my dorms, I met wonderful girls like Mercy, Veronica, Sabrina, Anne, and Anna. They're so cool. Um, they're very passionate about God, and they taught me a lot. <laughs> I thank God for them. Um, I just want to thank everyone for putting every effort into my life to see the best person I can become and be. Growing up, I lost my brother, whom I love the most. We were close, but didn't really get along. That was the most difficult thing I had to overcome. It really tore me apart into pieces, but God on my side, I overcame everything. For he said, by his stripes we are healed. I came, I came to realize at LCI that God will never give you something you can't handle or accomplish. Even when, even when you feel that you can't do it, God will never give you something you can't do. Guys, for no matter what you guys may be going through, I don't know what your situations may be, what your struggles or addictions or whatever it may be. I just, I just want to tell you guys to just keep pushing on forward because God's always there. And if you give up, you'll never get to the destination God wants you to be. Um, this is one of my favorite memory verse I learned from LCI, with Pastor Rich. Um, it goes like this. Um, let me see. <laughs> Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I just leave that with you guys tonight to think about it and just go on through your life and 
hope you may remember me one day and yeah that's all thank you guys for listening may god bless you all The next man I'd like to invite up is one who's had a major life change, and I'm real proud of him. Come on up, Eddie. Eddie's a very generous man, too. He brought us a lot of paletas while, while we were there, and uh, we loved him. He's, he, he's a very, very good man. Good night, everybody. My name is Eddie Braun. I had a very hard weeks, three weeks, and very good weeks. God was working in me in so many different ways. I changed my life about three, two to three months ago. And I had one person encourage me to go to church. And uh, I was going before I was going to Fountain of Life. And I came back here and I felt at home. There's so many things that people could do for one another that could encourage people to come closer to God. I see that we we don't do enough. We could do a lot more than we do. I only needed a small push to come closer. I had a very, very dark life in me. In my life, I did so many things wrong. I didn't think that God would ever forgive me what I did. And I'm so happy that, that I saw a light and it freed me. I just didn't know how to say what. It was just to say, God forgive me. And he did. The love that God has for a person, you cannot express, you cannot tell people, because the love is too good to tell people how good the love is of God. I'm so happy for my parents, my family that came. And I had my mom always to encourage me to come closer to God. It took a while, but I see, I see a future in me and I see that I could be a picture to other people too. I thank all the leaders for the LCI. It has been a really good blessing I learn a lot, even if I was the person that fell out for one week, didn't go to LCI, but that didn't mean that I didn't trust in God. Thanks, everybody. I'm really proud of that man. He took a big, big step. I forget who's next. Oh yes, one of my favorites here. Um, she's very special to me because she used to work for me. In fact, she's the only alumni that was in the class this year. She had uh, attended LCI four years ago. And she's back again. And uh, come on up, Anna.
She also got the highest score on the test. Followed very closely behind by Veronica and Julie, though, as well. Good evening. My name is Anna, and I feel very blessed to have been a part of this class because I've seen my classmates change so much, and it has changed me just to see them change. Before I came, I w my heart was spiritually dead, and I feel like these three weeks have been a real heart awakening experience for me. One of the areas that I've experienced change in is in my view of the cross. I, the cross used to not mean much to me. It was just, well, Jesus died for me. I got to go to heaven. That was it. And it was, I can understand how some people can make a big deal of the cross. And also, I struggled with believing that God really loved me. I mean, it was in my head. Yeah, I knew it all about it, but it was never in my heart. And that has changed here. Jack Frost and Louis Giglio were always talking about God's great love, and I could see it shining in their eyes, and, and it was, you could see their heart was full of God's love, and I was attracted to that, and I wanted what they had, and, but I still doubted. And one day, as I was doubting God's love again, revelation hit me, and questions began to come in my mind, like, isn't the cross enough to show me how much God loves me? And doesn't it mean anything to me that he gave up everything for me? I pictured him hanging on the cross, suffering with the weight of the whole world's sin on him. And suddenly I got it. And I was like, yeah, he really does love me. If he came down from heaven, being the creator of the whole universe, and he comes down to earth, being a tiny dot in the universe he himself created, and died for us like that, then he really must love us. I realized that the cross was the greatest picture of love the world could ever find, and it became a beautiful thing for me. That I never could see that as a beautiful thing before. It was just a regular thing. John 15, verse 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. This revelation meant a lot to me, and it was one of my greatest moments in LCI. Well, we, we've learned a lot during these weeks, and I hope that we can stay with what we've learned, as Paul says to Timothy. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted while evildoers and impostors go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you've learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you've learned it. Further on, Paul says of himself, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. This is what I would want all, for all of us. Thank you. Now the next young lady I'd like to invite up has been such a joy, such a balanced young person. Come on up, Veronica. <laughs> She's so good, she was upset because she didn't have more to repent of. <laughs> hey, everyone. Hope you guys are having a great day. If you don't, that's probably your problem because your choice to have a good attitude. Anyway, I'm <laughs> sorry. So hey everyone, I'm Veronica Fair and I'm 15 years old. I didn't come to LCI because I struggled with identity. I struggled with my destiny, where God called me to be, what his plan for me was, and he never disappoints. He gave me a new meaning and purpose to my life. God showed me that he has an especially different plan for each of us, all in different directions. And don't you think for one second that his plan is boring? His version of life is way better than you, than you guys could ever come up with. Living in his perfect love is an adventure. 
I had heard several of the LCI teachings before, but there is something about having truth spoken into your life for three weeks straight. Truth is powerful. His word is powerful. God has showed me how important it is to spend time with him every day because he is a mighty warrior and our great commander. And we are in a huge spiritual battle, so we have to spend time with our commander so we know what to do because the Satan is attacking us daily. So it's important to meet with him daily. There is so much more I could say, but you just have to know how amazing he is. He can do great things in our lives if we just let him. He is just so awesome. It's mind-blowing. When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through, th through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Next, I'd like to invite a couple up. Well, it's our last couple, so come on up, Kendrick and Blanca. Now, both of them have only recently come to the Lord, and it's such, such a joy to see, the, see them grab a hold of the truths of God, and, and especially for Kendrick, who made a major change in his life and, uh, and had a lot of struggles, but he overcame them all. Good night, everyone. My name is Kendrick Hernandez, and my wife, Blanca. I was born July 1990, and had a very bad life behind. But now I can say I, I am of the Lord now. My life was a, I have to read my notes, I don't have a good memory. <laughs> my life, was a very rough, ugly, alcoholic, drug crazy street life. I can say was, because now I am a new person. Thanks to Jesus Christ and the teachings we got in LCI. I can say of Psalms 40, verse 1 to 3, it says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the mirror clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he had put a new song in my mouth, even praise to our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. I had accepted already Jesus before I came to LCI, but I was running the risk to fall back because I didn't know many things I found out here in LCI. The teachings we got here were very profound. Profound that, that they touched even the last corner of my heart and opened up many rusty, stinking, ugly ways of thinking to a renewed mind. And I got to increase my faith and trust in the Lord right here at LCI. It sounds easy, yes, here in LCI, but nope, it's not easy. This is where the devil tempts us a lot. And I was here in LCI, I, I, I passed a lot of, a lot of temptations almost. Whew, the, I think it, I was the most one that wanted to go home every, nearly every day. I wanted to go home. 
But I thank God that, that he gave me the strength to, to be able to stay here and, and be able to come out and be able to testify that I can feel myself free, that I can feel that, that he has really helped me to, to, to overcome all temptations of the devil. And now the devil is mad, but I am happy because God protects me from him. <laughs> he is mad because now I want to be a light to others that are going through the same ugly white fantasy dark road I was going. Now I say in Proverbs 4.18, but the path of the just is as the singing light that shine it, that shine it more and more unto the perfect day. Amen. Uh, next I would like to thank our Lord God that give us Life every day. Second thanks, I would like to thank the, the persons who make LCI come possible. And special thanks to Mr. Richard and Miss Rachel, to Pastor David and Sister Dupe, who babysitted us. I could say babysitted us because whoo, a lot of sometimes many problems happen in, in the, in, like for example me, right? I, I, I go through a lot of things, a lot of struggles, but thank God I am right here saying that the Lord has really filled up my heart with joy and I am just happy, I, 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 the joy I feel, I, I, could, I could really testify that Jesus has saved me. Amen and thank you everybody and no. Good night to everyone. My name is Blanca. I am 23 years old. I live in Selena Village. I, I decided to come to LCI because one of my problems was I, I, didn't, I didn't want to forgive other people because my heart was broken, broken for things that happened to me. And I... I I, my heart became very hard to forgive others, but here in, from Potters I learned that I have to open my heart and let the Lord guide me and help me forgive others because how he forgive, forgive me for my sins, like that I, I should forgive others because his great love, for, for his great love he forgive me and, and like that I learned that I have to forgive other people that I doesn't want to forgive. It was struggling me a lot because I have a lot of pain for that in my heart. And some of the people here pray for me and help me a lot. And I would like to thank, thank God first for, for the opportunity that he gave me for be here. And thanks Mr. Richard, Miss Rachel, and Pastor David and Miss Lupe, they help us a lot, and I would like to thank them. And Miss Mirta, she was one of our ministry. She is not here, but I would like to thank her too. She helped me a lot because she she pray for me and she give me good good um, good words to continue and. I am, I am thanks with the Lord that he filled my heart with love and with hope. And I am very happy to be here. And I would like you thank with all of you to be here listening to listen our testimonies. And I am very happy. I, I made a change in my life. I accept Jesus there in Potters. And I feel very, very happy for that. And thanks the Lord for everything he does for us. And may God bless you all. Thank you. I'm, I'm really proud of that couple. They've, they've come so far and just thrills me to, to hear that testimony. 
Well, the next young lady I'd like to invite up is uh, the sister, which you've all been waiting to see. <laughs> Jessica, come on up. I'm, I'm just so thrilled that these four girls are best friends, and they've went through all this together. Now they can go back and support each other in, in all that they've uh, been through and learned. And, yeah. <laughs> Good night, everyone. My name is Jessica. I'm from Placentia. I was living in the world before I accepted and gave my life to God. Doing my own thing listening, but not accepting the words of my mother and my Aunt Laverne, or anyone for their matter, for that matter, who, made, who may have tried to steer me down the right path. When I first heard about potters, I wasn't interested or excited. Uh, until I spoke with my cousin Misty, who is also here with me tonight. Um, she gave me a little push to give it a try, so I decided to come. When I went to LCI, that was the best decision of my life. And I want to thank the Lord for, giving me, for getting me here and making a difference in my life. He rescued me and continues to amaze me with everything that are beyond what I deserve. My time spent at LCI was the icing missing on my cake. I am so grateful for all that I have learned. LCI has made everything look so clear for me, and I am overjoyed and so glad that I decided to give my life to God. This is just the beginning, and there will be trials and tests with prayers and support of my family, my church, and my faith in Jesus by my side, I will overcome. I would like to take this time to thank the woman who has been, been there through the thick and thin, who have taught me how to believe in God and never give up on, never give up on faith. My mother, Verna Farrell. Um, I would like to thank Pastor Jean and Aunt Laverne, Miss Anita Lowen, Thank you for being there for me and making my trip possible. Special thanks to Pastor Dave, Ms. Mr. Rich, Ms. Rachel, Ms. Dupe, and her husband, David. Above all, thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord I, bring, Lord, I bring you my burdens, and you know my situation. You know I can't make it without you. Comfort my heart, give me strength, and help me carry on. Amen. Thank you. And last but not least, <laughs> Mercy, come on up. Now, Mercy has been to LCI a lot of times, but not for the class. She was just uh, coming after school and, and hanging, hanging out sometimes when David and Dupe were there. So, so it, was, it seemed so normal to have her there this time, though, as a classmate. Um, now, she was also the, you might say, the, the dorm mom right? <laughs> when, when somebody was struggling in the dorm, she was the one that was up praying for them, and she was the one that was looking after them and, and everything, so you, you proved yourself there, Mercy. Good evening, everyone. Um, as you all have heard, um, my name is Mercy. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank God for his um, grace and his uh, love for bringing me here, and um, I want to thank my parents and also Pastor Rich and Miss Rachel for um, being a great leader. And also, um, I want to thank everyone that came here tonight, and also the cook. Um, the reason why I came to LCI wasn't just you know to get free or whatever, but I was just looking for something. I was looking for something great. I was looking for my destiny because I wasn't even sure what God wants me to do or where he wants me to be. 
but um, so uh, he gave me a verse before, and uh, it was just confirmed at LCI. It says, um, Isaiah 43, verse 19, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So that's just what um, the word of God that he gave to me, and I've been holding out to it. Um, throughout LCI, I learned to, you know, um, deal with pride and whatever, because I always thought I had it all, and um, I didn't have to work hard for it because I'll just do it naturally. I mean, sometimes it works out, but I just seem to be average to myself. But through God's grace, I was able to overcome that, and um, that's how I've been changed. So, uh, and the preaching from Claire for a dollar, uh, he said, Change is not change until you change. So that's what really got me the most. In order for you to change, you got to change, and you have to renew your mind each day. So finally, I just want to thank God one more, um, one more time for giving me the opportunity to be here and to be able to speak in front of you all. So, um, yes, amen. Thank you. Mercy's also the one that put the slideshow together, so thank you, Mercy. <laughs> now, at this time, okay, this time I'd like to, uh, I'd like to ask all the LCI students to come up front here. We want to commission you to go out and live what you've learned. So come on up front here. Uh, line up here, probably two rows deep, or maybe not, I don't know. And uh, facing the audience. Come on, um, and I'm going to ask uh, 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 Pastor David Moore to come up. I'm going to ask Pastor David Adigbami to come pray. And uh, Leo, Leo, would you please come forward and, yes, thank you. Come on up front, and, and I'm going to ask all three of you to say a prayer over these students and bless them to go forward and walk it out. This has been, I'm going to take a second because I can. I just want to say this is one of the best group of students that uh, we've had the privilege of getting to bless and work with and pray with and minister with. And some of these young ladies I've known since they were little bitty. And, you know, Leroy helped us do the first Men of Honor here in Belize, uh, uh, the first camp, and helped run one of the very first groups. And so some of these guys are like almost like spiritual children, and we just so full of blessed in our heart what the Lord has done. Heavenly Father, we just come before you right now, Lord, as a congregation of people. Lord, as we declare your blessing and your hand over the lives of these students. Lord, we declare that the plans of the enemy have been cut off, God. That you have come in might by your own right hand to bring deliverance to each and every one of them. That you have come with ordination, with anointing, with calling, and with destiny. That you have been pouring out gifts, Father, and preparing a great and mighty army, Father, to go out into the kingdom and declare the word of the Lord. We just anoint each and every one of them right now, Father, with a prayer of confirmation. Lord, declaring that the blessing of the Lord is upon them that you are enabling and empowering them, Father, to face every obstacle and every trial. Lord, that every enemy has already been defeated, that they will bow before your plan, and that they are going to be mighty warriors, Father, in your kingdom. That the anointing of God is going to cause them to destroy the plans of the enemy, to set captives free, to declare liberty, to declare the love of God, to pour out the, the ministering, Father, that you have placed within them. Lord, we just call forth those gifts right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we are just preparing for the harvest that you said was right and ready. These laborers, Father, we send into your field, anointed of God, to do a great work in Jesus' name. Bless, encourage with might and strength. We give you glory and we give you praise for all that you're doing in their lives. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound 
Go save a wretch like me. I was once lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now. Father, we celebrate you in the life of your people. We thank you for how far you brought them. We thank you for the grace that began with them. We thank you for the grace of the how. We thank you for the grace that we see them through. Father, let your grace rest upon them. In the name of Jesus, grace to do exploit for him. For you have received more knowledge of him. In that knowledge and through that knowledge, receive impartation for exploitation. Go forth and do exploit for your God in the name of Jesus Christ. The people that have seen you before, they have seen a new one. As you go into the midst of the people, the God of grace will make you have impact in their life. Because you have had impact through these teachings for these several weeks, the Lord God of glory will make your life be impacting to the life of others in the name of Jesus. You have encountered the God of change and you have received a change of heart, a change of life, a change in character. Let your life be the light unto your generations in the name of Jesus Christ. Go in peace. We declare it is well with your spirit, it is well with your soul, it is well with your body. In Jesus' name, amen. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this big group, Lord. Father, I just pray, Lord, that you just um, protect them, Lord, while they go home and be in their normal life again. Father, I just pray that you just be with them. I know they will never forget you for what they have learn what they have experienced. Holy Spirit, at this moment, I just ask you, Lord, to just touch each one of them. Just, just be with them, Lord. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you have took them into your kingdom, Lord. I thank you that they have, taste, they have tasted you. And Lord, I know they will never forget you. Father, I ask you, Lord, just bless them. Bless them, Lord. Whenever they go home, Lord, that there will be a light to the family, to the community, to the whole country, I believe, Lord. Father, I pray that this light will continue to multiply into others. Be an example to your friends, family, neighbors, whoever is around you. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that you just bless them. Bless them, Lord. Holy Spirit, touch them. Anoint them with your holy fire, Lord. I just pray that that they will just continue to have a good future, Lord. I bless them with a good future. Some of them are young yet, Lord. They have a good start. Some of them are on, are on their way. But I pray that all of them will have a good future all the way to the end. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, gentlemen. In closing, I just want to let you all know that uh, the next class is January. I think the 18th Potter starts. So if anyone's interested, please let us know. And uh, let me just say a short prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for everyone that's here tonight that came out to support these students. Father, let us all go and shine your light wherever we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you all for Build coming. Your and you're